Whatever happened to predictability? The milkman, the paper boy, the evening TV. You miss your old familiar friends with waiting just around the bed. We are back, throwback TV Thursday, uh, Alex is back in one piece from the uh, wedding uh, out east, he didn't come back with a Boston accent either, did you? Uh, I did it. <laughs> hopefully I didn't, uh, our accents are made fun of out there, um, they don't appreciate how we say bag and things of that nature, uh, so our accents were made fun of, but they have, uh, <laughs> they have aggressive accents out there to say the least. Yeah. I would, I've never, I'm going to experience it out in New York, the New York voices out there, so I'm sure we'll be ridiculed at the end of July. Mm -hmm. But we are back, a uh, week off, and okay, I missed it. I don't know about you, but I missed watching some TV. Right, yeah, and then, <laughs> yeah, I guess technically, two, oh no, last week was just the week off, but yeah. Um, yeah, well, quick story about my time out east. <clears throat> we, the wedding was in Newport, Rhode Island, and uh, after the wedding, uh, we ran into... Uh, John Feidelberg from Barstool. That's right, I forgot about out that. At, out Fights. at a bar. Out at a bar. Um, so what happened was we walk into this bar. It's total fate, pretty much. We walk into the bar. Um, me and a couple of guys are uh, pretty big Barstool fans, so we uh, he has his hat on that he's making a big deal about these days. And to be fair, it's a, it's a stunning hat. <laughs> it's a stunning hat. So I, I recognize it, and I turn to my buddy Nate, and I go, Nate, it's Feidelberg. And he goes, we, what are we going to do? Like, we, we knew we had to get a picture, but we didn't want to be those guys. Right. So so we're hashing a plan for like probably 10 to 15 minutes. And then finally, we just walk up to him and say, hey, can we get a picture? And he, he's like, yeah, sure. And then we had a, probably a 10 to 15 minute conversation with him. Because uh, he, he, he asked us, because we brought up all of our Wisconsin guys. Obviously, Big Cat from Barstool went to Wisconsin. So we're talking about that. Uh, and then we're talking about the, the ceremony where, where, we, where everything was held. Uh, Cal Pari's one of Cal Pari's daughters had his had her wedding at the same place. Oh, really? So you can oh, imagine it's yeah. it's it's a nice place. It's exclusive, right. things of that nature. And, you, and and the whole thing out there is you can't get a Saturday wedding at this place because it's just so exclusive. Okay. And, and Cal Pari couldn't even get a Saturday wedding. Wow. And the wedding there that I went to is on a Friday, but that was the whole spiel that he gave us about that. That he ran into him <laughs> on a Sunday at a Dunkin' Donuts, and his, he was getting he was getting geared up for the wedding on the Sunday because they could only get a Sunday oh, wedding I at this place. That. So yeah, but it was uh, it was a good interaction. Um, obviously, I remain a fan of him from it. It was pretty. It was pretty cool. He didn't right. have to. He didn't have to talk to us for right. the amount of time that he did, or even <laughs> give us the, the time of day, but. Uh, that was uh, that was probably the biggest, other than the wedding, that was probably the biggest happening that yeah, happened that weekend. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's pretty sweet. Like, like the guys that we listen to, like fights, and, you know, obviously KFC's had a little bit of issues these last few months. But yeah. they're still normal dudes. Like, they're probably just guys like us that yeah. just want to hang out. And then, like I said, they're just famous now off of it. I right. mean, really, they probably started off just like we did. So, yeah, yeah that's sweet. Well, we're glad you're, to have you back. Yeah. Um, so we just, I don't know when we came up with this one. I don't, I don't know, was it before we left or did we do this? I don't know. We're doing full house, by the way, is what we're doing. I don't remember, did nobody really mention this? We kind of just figured this one out, didn't we? Yeah, we, we figured it out. Um, we didn't want to go back-to-back -back weeks of Say by the Bell. Oh, that's even what Even though, even though Say by the Bell is our, is our bread and butter. <clears throat> and I saw that we're already getting fact checked by your cousin online about <laughs> about knowing political figures and, and things of that yeah, nature. Yeah, I forgot so maybe, about that. Maybe we should we'll we'll look into possibly doing research some more, but probably not. Yeah. Uh, but th it was one of the things to break up our uh, breakdown of of uh, Say by the Bell all the time. Right. So we went to Full House. Now, I think back when we were younger, Full House kind of ran side by side with with. Saved by the Bell, I think. Like I think, like after school, I think there was two episodes of Full House was on, and then Saved by yeah. the Bell or vice versa. Maybe it was Full and House in like morning five. Too. Yeah, and even I, in the morning too. For some reason, I remember like okay, we get home, and let's say we weren't doing anything after school. One of the few times that we like, I remember we went home, got a snack, watched like Saved by the Bell from four to and four thirty, and I think Full House came on at five and five thirty yeah. because it was more of a family <laughs> aspect show, if I right. can remember. Right. Yep. Exactly. Uh, so we picked a couple ones that came to our mind right away, and actually I was really surprised on how great these were to watch. I I thought you know with 
being saved by the bell, being so locked in and, and knowing everything. That Full House, I've seen a lot of these episodes, but you know, I didn't know how much I would remember. But it was actually pretty good. I don't know how did you feel about it. Yeah, uh, I, <clears throat> the episodes that we picked are kind of two episodes that stood out, like you said, off the top of our head in our mind. And I was surprised that they they held up pretty well, um, even for today. I mean, they're probably. I mean, I think the episode that I picked was season three, and I think it started in. Full Hall started in 1987, so it was right, right. around 1990. Exactly. Um, but, I mean, it, I, th- I thought the episodes were still pretty good. Yeah, so we'll jump right into the first one. Uh, the first one we're going to hit is, is, like Alex said, Season 3, Episode 20. Uh, it aired on March 9th, 1990, so I was three. Uh, which is... <laughs> was, would you say March 9th of yeah. 1990? Yeah. So I wasn't even a year old yet. Yeah, so this is... I have a great memory, though, so it's fine. <laughs> um it's titled Honey, I Broke the House. Uh, classic. It's one I've been kind of, when I was paging through the full house titles, they have some real, like, Saved by the Bells are good, but these are these are really good. I oh, think. very good. So uh, we jump right into it. Uh, show starts off, we see Joey uh, teaching Michelle T-ball in yep. the backyard. Um, one thing that came to mind right away is, the first thing that broke in is, Joey is always wearing the Red Wings hockey jersey, it seems like, in quite a bit of, of the episodes I remember, and also his <laughs> mullet is absolutely fantastic at at this point. <laughs> point. Yeah. I don't know anything else. You know, yeah, yeah. The, Joey, we know from the whole series, Joey is a big hockey guy. I don't even, I don't know if he's a specifically a Red Wings. I can't guy, remember but, if he wore another jersey because I know there's been other ones where he's worn. Yeah, uh, but I know that he's huge into hockey. That's kind of his shtick. Um, but it's a classic. It's a classic scene of. Uh, trying to teach somebody, uh, you know, baseball. Michelle's hitting off a tee. Uh, Joey's there. She hits it, and he goes, oh, go to first. She naturally runs the third, and then back over the yeah. first, and then the second, and then it's a classic, oh, go home, go home. And then she runs inside the house. She runs right inside the house, yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm like Alex, yeah, so we're not going to fact check on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. But um, going back to how Joey ends up, at the house, I think Joey is Danny's wife's brother, wasn't it? Or, Je- uh, or is it Jesse? No, I think that's Jesse's. Oh, okay. I think Joey. I think it's, Joey's just a friend. Joey's just a friend. Okay. I think that's how it goes. I think you're right. I think it is. And and you know, we find out in your episode. I mean, we obviously know right away the, the first season that um, Danny's wife dies, and then they come in to help. Yeah, to help him kids, out the, raise, to raise the kids. Yes, okay. and I'm pretty sure I um, think you are right. And 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 you know, foreshadowing a little, or you know, going a little bit ahead of the years, Joey and Danny went to college. That's together. right. Okay, and that would make sense. Cause and they, so I think he's just a friend. Um, and then and then Jesse is the one that's the brother. Okay. Yeah, I think I, you're right on that. That's that's right. Because obviously Jesse's way cooler than Danny. So oh, they would never yeah. hang out together. Yeah. They, yeah. <laughs> Um, anything else from the beginning scene? The, the, this episode kind of where this is a, a show where they do a little bit of a part of the show and then they go into the theme. Yeah, and then you come back after the break. No, that was pretty much it. It was just a classic, uh, you know, head home, and then she runs inside and goes, "I'm home." Yeah, so it gets a, a classic laugh out of yep. a, a, a toddler girl. Um, we then get to Michelle and Kimmy doing homework. Sing- DJ, and Kimmy. oh DJ, sorry, yep. not D, yeah, Michelle. Uh, they were singing Blame It on the Rain out loud. Um, Stephanie arrives. Uh, one thing that I saw here, they're in the room. Uh, they're all wearing the sweaters. are all horrendous. Oh, <laughs> all brutal, brutal sweaters. Brutal sweaters. And a little flashback is they're listening to like a Walkman, and then they have they have their headphones on. That's right, yeah. They're listening to the music. So we can't hear the music uh, during the episode, but then they're like singing out loud to it. Okay. Yeah, uh, like I said horrendous sweaters oh, just awful sweaters doing homework uh they kind of shoot back downstairs uh danny and becky are working on tomorrow's show which yep. they are new what are they like to, wake, wake up san francisco yeah so they're like morning news uh or morning yeah. i don't know how you compare it to here in wisconsin good day wisconsin yeah we good day wisconsin so, so there's news involved but it's more of an actual you know 
right. morning show. So one thing that crossed my mind: Don't these guys have an office at the studio? Why do they they have to work at home? They have the, they have the prep. They have the prep at Danny's house. Clearly, and uh, mid afternoon, they're not going to stay at the studio to right, prep for not, tomorrow's show. This is uh, right. They should still be at the office, especially when you got Joey and and Jesse are home watching the kids. Um, that was kind of odd, in my opinion, but hey, what can you say? Uh, Uncle Jesse then makes his first appearance. He's wearing quite the outfit there. Oh, I, <laughs> I mean, he to put, it in, to put it in layman's term these days, he came in and he was looking like a snack. <laughs> I mean, the, he, he took my breath away when he came on, on screen. Uh, kind of talking back and forth. I guess the biggest part of this scene is... And maybe you can tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, Jesse hears about a business dinner that yeah. Becky has to go on. Yeah. Uh, automatically, Jesse uh, becomes extremely jealous. And then what was this twink's name? Bo McIntyre. Bo McIntyre. Uh, he's extremely jealous for some reason. So I don't know if there was previous things that were going on before when you guys <laughs> were, were seeing each other. Or, but it was like an instant jealousy that these two were going out to eat. Yeah, so so a few things. Uh, so the... You know, it was a quick scene in, in, with DJ and Kimmy and, and, and DJ in and, and Stephanie's room. But the whole thing is Stephanie has dance class coming up and she wants to play beforehand. Oh, that's like, right. Yeah, and that's she right. goes, oh, I have 20 minutes before dance. Can can somebody play with me? Like, you want to play? <laughs> um, like, when we would go and, like, bike to somebody's house and knock on their door and say, right. oh, you want to play? Uh, so she so she did that to them. Nobody wanted to play upstairs. She goes downstairs, asks the same question to, to Danny and Becky. They're like, oh, we're prepping. Like you said, Jesse comes in, asks Becky to dinner. He goes, oh, uh, you know, Becky, do you want to go to dinner? And then, like, afterwards, do you want to have chicken a la Jesse? And, <laughs> you know, it, it, put it into context, he has the same great lines as Morris almost. He does. He's, he's very similar to on, on that. On but that but then she's like, no, you know, we're prepping for our show, but I'll be a guest tomorrow, so I have a business dinner. And she's like, who's this guy? And then Danny's like, oh, he's just an ex-QB neurosurgeon and Bay Area's most <laughs> eligible bachelor. Right. Bull McIntyre. Bull McIntyre. All three. So, like, like Jesse is just, is goofy, basically. So oh, he, he just hates it. Just hates it. Um, uh, anything else from that scene? No, that's pretty much it. Uh, next scene cuts to Stephanie and uh, is going to annoy Joey, right? Outside. Yeah, yep, same thing. Yeah, hey, Joey, I, I got dance coming up, but I want to hang out pretty right. much. Right, being the typical, uh, you know, what, what do you think she is in this, seven or eight, yeah. probably, just being an annoying, uh, not, you know, she's, she's bored, basically. Uh, we get to see Joey's car. Uh, it's parked in the backyard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, again, nobody knows how it got in the backyard, how it can get out of the backyard, because it's fenced in. They do have a fenced in backyard. <laughs> yeah, they don't. We never really see a driveway, but it's there. You know, it's, it's San Francisco, and if, if you look at the house, you know that you know the classic view at the beginning is it's on a slanted street. Uh, maybe he doesn't want to, you know, up, up and away, down, down and in, classic driver's yeah, ed. But maybe, maybe he doesn't trust the emergency brake on this to, to have it roll away. Very, very. Good how point. how we get into the backyard? We have no idea because it's a fenced in backyard. <laughs> um, Right, so Joey's being the typical car guy D-bag, I guess you could say. <laughs> That's just, fair. Um, he's named the car, and again, falls under that car guy thing. Uh, he's wearing a moon man's jacket, almost. <laughs> I, I, now, I get San Francisco's a little cooler. I mean, it, it, it's March. I guess they kind of go with the seasons. And so, like, you know, a like jacket, but an um, unbelievable jacket choice by uh Joey and, and what's he doing? Is he just wa like washing the car? Or, yeah, or, or, but there's no holes. There? I don't know what he's doing. Yeah, he, he, he's waxing it. He's waxing the car and he's checking it over. He's you know telling telling Stephanie that this is a 1963 Rambler and classic primo condition, all this stuff. And then he he sees a nick in it where some paint is chipped right. off when he's uh, when he's going about it, you know waxing the car and just you know loving his car. Um, so Stephanie comes out and is trying to bug him, and he's too into his car to, to play with her. Right. Um, so, like you said, Joey sees a scratch and, and, and runs to the store. Now, I've never been to San Francisco. Again, he's leaving the car there. Is, is he taking the trolley? Is that what he does? I, well, <laughs> well, what happens is his Comet comes out. He goes, hey, Comet, you want to go for a walk? Oh, okay. And, and on this walk, he's going to go pick up. I forget the, the he they say some uh, BS name of some mom and pop hardware store. Yeah, I didn't um, catch that either. 
Uh, but, you know, Comet comes out. And one thing, as a dog owner, Comet comes outside and is already on a leash. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, Joey goes, hey, Comet. He yells inside, hey, Comet, you want to go on a walk? And Comet comes out already on the leash, ready to go. The door's open, and the dog's not even like coming out. Very well-trained dog, I guess, better than mine. But already on a leash is... That's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. Never, he, I mean, he put a leash on himself. He did. So, and now Comet's a pretty... He's a recurring guest almost in every episode, yeah. I think. Uh, uh, but, yeah, so that that makes sense. Uh, so he's going to take Comet for a walk. And, and then he can pick up some right. Pick up some paint or right. some touch up paint. In the says. in the meantime, you know Stephanie is 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 mad now, or you know like oh why won't nobody play with me? So of course she's gonna sit in the car and play play in the car. Yeah, you know, we've all done that as a kid. Uh, what Joey did is he left the keys in the ignition or, or, or in the <laughs> yeah. car, right? Or did no, he leave you, it? In, in he the... left them in the ignition. Yep. I, I've seen things happen like that before, but. Again, you got a you know a child out there by the car. I mean, that should be you know you probably should have remembered that, but he did. Um, turns the ignition on, right? Yeah, because right she wants it. So she's like, "Oh, I'm driving across the country. I need some driving music." So right. she turns the car on to to go to the radio. And of course, the classic mix-up, uh, you know, R for radio, is R is also for reverse. <laughs> yep, and just like that. Uh, Stephanie reverses the car right to the kitchen. Right in the house. I mean, and the kitchen is absolutely destroyed. I mean, it is full blown. It was a pretty impressive set that they did that to. Uh, it looked like the car drove through the house. Yeah, you? yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you know, they have the the makeup of their house is they have a big window back there, so it's the perfect, pretty much target to drive right through is this window. And it, it was a pretty impressive the way that they made pretty much the whole wall go out too as soon as she dro- drove in. I wonder if they brought Spielberg in to, to handle that. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, the kitchen is absolutely destroyed. Um, did we know, because Danny and, and uh, what's her name? Who was that? Becky. Becky left. Did Jesse leave? Yeah, Jesse Danny? leaves with them. Cause okay. she's, and then Joey's gone. But DJ and Kimmy are still upstairs. They are still upstairs. Clearly, they're listening to their their, their music way too loud because they don't hear a car come I mean, through. Right. Come through the, uh, the wall and be in the kitchen anymore. And then Stephanie gets out and just, you know, she's like, oh, man, what did I do? And she goes, oh, maybe nobody will notice. Right. And, <clears throat> yeah. So, like they said, going back to the next scene, I, I, do they walk downstairs that they didn't hear anything? Or, or, or no, Stephanie goes upstairs. That's right. right. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah, yeah. Stephanie yeah. goes upstairs while they're still on their headphones and starts packing her suitcase immediately. Immediately, yeah. The only person that, other than... Stephanie that knows that the the cars in the kitchen is Michelle. Michelle, Ma- no, Michelle right. comes in, cl- does like a, a a perfect meme face for like, uh oh, like what happened here? And goes, "There's a car in the kitchen." Who's watching Michelle? Right, there's nobody <laughs> around. I guess she's. I guess DJ supposed to be watching her. Yeah, but I DJ, guess. real good, real good. You know, oversight by DJ. She can't even tell a car <laughs> comes into the house, and she's supposed to be watching her infant. Or I guess she's a toddler sister, right? And she can walk. Like I get that, but you know, in in if you're familiar with the the Tanner residence, they got the, the unbelievable staircase. You yeah, know, the stairs are pretty steep going down, and the balcony that lays right over the living room is not. I mean, it's a it's a fall. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, it's a fall. <laughs> so like you said, so but back to Stephanie, uh, goes up and starts packing her suitcase immediately. I, uh, wonderful idea. Yeah, you, smart. Get the, you get the hell out of town immediately. Smart, yeah. One time, I mean, that is. I, I pulled the same stunt one time. Uh, uh, my brother and I got into a fight um, over a basketball game in the driveway, and I took off on my bike and I just biked through like Sawyer Creek for like two hours. Nobody could find me. But this is a classic <laughs> runaway. It's yeah. a classic runaway. It's it's your automatic first thought when you're younger. Right. Just get out of here. That's the best thing that's gonna happen. Um, yeah, so like I actually wrote that right in here. Staff, Steph is doing the classic runaway. Yeah, so that's that's awesome. Um, well, yeah, Michelle comes in and goes, "There's a car in the kitchen," and and DJ goes, "Yeah, and there's a bus in the bathroom." So they don't believe her, of course, because who, who's going to believe their little sister? Right. And Stephanie, you know, she's packing her suitcase. She gets it all ready. Uh, she's re- the, the car honks for her dance, and she's giving these like heartfelt goodbyes to DJ and Michelle. Like she's <laughs> never going to see him again. That's right. Yeah. Um, I guess, is there any other part before Kimmy and DJ walk downstairs? No, yeah, no, the, the, the last, uh, the last line was, 
Kimmy is looking for a, a similar heartfelt goodbye from Stephanie. And yeah. <laughs> Stephanie just turns over and goes, yeah, yeah, see you, Gibbler. Yeah, see you, Gibbler. Um, so, like I said, the next scene cuts to um, Kimmy and DJ walk downstairs to see the damage. I believe Uncle Jesse also walks in. Yeah, pretty much right after him. Right after him. Kaz then obviously sees what happened, does the classic phrase, have mercy. Yep. Uh, so I guess now the big issue is they got to break the news to Danny next. Yeah. And, I, and now if you're not familiar with Full House, which I'm sure all you are, Danny is a, basically a clean freak or neat freak. So this is going to really put him over the edge, I would oh, think. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You, um, Michelle does have a great line when because she comes down with DJ and Kimmy and they go, um, they're like, oh, how did the car get in here? And Michelle just goes, oh, through the window. <laughs> great line. Simple enough. And then DJ and Kimmy use the same line on Uncle Jesse. Uncle Jesse goes, how did the car get in here? Oh, through the window. Through the window, yep. Uh, so like I said, that's the that's the main, main thing going on here. Uh now, does Danny come in the, from the... He, he comes in the front door, and he's like, Hey, everybody, I'm back. You know, where are you? And Gibbler goes, We're in your new garage. And is a DJ trying to film what's gonna how, what, how he's going to look, right? Or, or yeah, take so, pictures or something? Right, or something. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's so, what I was so, so they're trying to... So they're like, Oh, DJ makes it seem like she's going to do something to kind of try to help fix the situation. She goes, Uncle Jesse, go out there and stall him to try to like get him to, from coming in here. So Jesse and Kimmy go out there. And DJ is still hanging back, which we don't know at the time. She, we think that she's like trying to do something, and she comes out. She goes, "Okay, I'm ready." And then Danny goes, oh, in the ki- and then bad. Danny goes yep. in the kitchen. She ca- she captures his face. Yeah. When when she when he comes in. And doesn't Danny say, "I could have this wrong, but I think he's most upset." That he's like, "I just waxed these floors." Yep. <laughs> I mean, yeah. What an absolute buffoon! Like, <laughs> like, I get it's a sitcom, but that is probably the least of what people are thinking at that at that stage when you see an absolute you're basically I mean how much damage do you think that is we're talking I don't know how much 15 20 at, at, at least at least I mean the, to replace a wall and all the other stuff in there so yeah so uh the next scene cuts to Becky's house I believe yep. right yep now Stephanie finds her way to Becky's house I don't think she lives that far from past episodes if I can remember I think it is fairly close yeah. Um, she's doing the noble thing. She wants to say goodbye before she's moving to Mexico. Um, she says, I can never go home again. Yeah. She says, I, I got to leave. Can never go home again. I have a huge, like, dinosaur, gigantic problem. And it's, like, too terrible to even put into words. <laughs> uh, one thing that I noticed here is Becky's house in the inside. Uh, I, I didn't know what time period it was. I th- so I just said the 1950s or oh, something. Yeah, that's it was just accurate. brutal. Like I, it was floral. like a, it was like an old floral Victorian inside. Like it was it was absolutely horrible. And I'm guessing she's renting. Yeah, uh, it has she's to be single a in you know in San Francisco, but like it was her. She furnished the house, obviously, or furnished it or her yeah. part. So I, I thought that was yeah. Back, good thing. Good thing Becky's a talk show host because she doesn't have a. A future as an interior designer because it was yeah. it was not great. It looks like it looks like uh, the furniture looks like the the kind of furniture you have in college when you can only piecemeal stuff together from yep. you know you know hand me downs from your your parents or your relatives from that they have in their basement from forty years ago exactly that they just want to get out of the house and then they know that you know it's not coming back because after you move out of college it goes on the <laughs> yeah it goes right on, on the curb on the curb uh, so. Yeah, uh, next kind of cuts in the Jesse, uh, knocks on the door, yep. comes to apologize about his jealousy, brings roses. Uh, one person that came to my head is, what a weenie. I mean, they had a little bit of an art. Like, it wasn't even really an argument, really. Was no, it, it wasn't. He's was like, oh, you're going to a dinner like a with some of, ex-QB neurosurgeon, most eligible like, ba- bachelor. He's just like, what's the deal with that? And Becky really wasn't that unhappy. Like, wasn't, like, that mad at him. It didn't seem, but, uh, I mean, to... No, Grant, I don't know. The garnish roses to me. I, to me, I thought that was a little over the top. Uh, but here's the big part here, which I actually enjoyed. This uh, Jesse sees the suitcase. Yep. And thinks and thinks Becky's back cheating on him. Yeah. <laughs> thinks that. Bo's there. Bo's there. That's Bo, some suitcase. business dinner. Bo came over for some early Jesse, appetizers. Jesse gets pissed. He's not happy, and and he, he figures out something to do. Now, in the meantime, Stephanie's hiding from from Uncle Jesse, obviously. Yeah. Um, 
So, of course, what every kid does when they hide, they go right toward the closet. I mean, that's a pretty average place where you'd go. Um, and then, of course, Jesse hears, what, a noise in the thing or the closet, or does he just start randomly checking? Yeah. No, you, you hear something. I think, like, she sneezes or... Yeah, something. Something like that draws him to the closet. Yeah, so... Um, eventually Jesse opens and finds her and then isn't Stephanie like hanging up on the, yeah on the... yeah so this is like the the you know the uh, the poster moment for the for the episode is Stephanie is hanging in the closet but like hanging out in the closet but she's literally hanging in the closet she's inside of a coat that's hanging on the door on the door yeah. and so she's like in the coat and like suspended um, above the ground like in the coat um and Uncle Jesse goes, hey, Steph, what are you doing here? She goes, oh, just hanging around, which she <laughs> quite literally was. Was. Um, so, you know, Jesse gets her down, and then obviously Stephanie doesn't admit to them what she did, correct? Yes. Uh, Jesse with a classic line here. He, you know, if he, he said, I, you know what, I've been in trouble a lot, or a ton, he goes. But you need to go home and face the music. <laughs> I, really, I really like that comment, because obviously we know Uncle Jesse is kind of that badass biker dude that's gotten in trouble before so musician would, with right, jesse and the rippers right, he would he knows um he knows all about you know that that kind of stuff so so stephanie uh, decides to go back yep goes back home faces the music um so then right now joey is not home yet he's, right yep you still well the thing is danny still thinks joey did it um that, That's right. Yeah, because okay. because Joey's not around, and you know, in the scene where Danny finds out, he's like, "Where's Joey?" And he thinks that he kind of bailed out because he's the one that did it. But really, Joey's just been gone the whole time. So when they cut back, they're back at home, and Danny's hanging out in the in the living room, and DJ comes in, and he goes, "She goes, oh, it's almost dinner time. You want me to set the car? Because the car's the, the car's, <laughs> the the car's where the table. Yeah, is the it. car's where the table is. A, a great line. These writers are pretty good." Yeah, they were they 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 did a good job. Um, so Stephanie does finally admit to everyone what she did. Yeah. Uh, Joey come does Joey Joey come home and sees. Yeah. Her so so when they're all hanging out, <clears throat> Joey comes in from his walk with Comet and getting the touch up paint, and Michelle delivers one of her her big lines, and you're big trouble, Mister. Yep. And uh, and Danny wasn't in there yet, but he comes back in and he goes, "You're big trouble, Mister." And Joey's like, "What's going on?" Like I did, is it this because I didn't refill the ice cube tray? He didn't, he has zero clue what's right. going on. So then Danny takes him into the kitchen, and DJ's in there again with the camera already, and That's Joey right. freaks they, out. They basically did the same thing with Danny. Yeah, right? exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, so Joey freaks out, of course. Uh, Stephanie runs upstairs, correct? Yeah. Well, so so Stephanie comes in with Uncle Jesse because. Uh, Joey and Danny are like, well, I didn't do it. And DJ's like, well, I didn't do it. And they're trying to figure out who did it. And, and you know, perfect timing with Jesse, Becky, and Stephanie coming back. And yep. D- uh, Jesse's like, well, I know who did. And she confesses. And she goes, she goes, yell, scream, punish me, or I'll just move to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so eventually we do get to the final scene of this episode. It's They're up in the bedroom, right? Yeah. And, uh, of course, Danny... Being the father goes up to talk to him. Um, one thing I noticed here, what I wrote down, you can add on to it if you have anything, but she drops the usual kid response, I never do anything right. But then she drops, I hate myself. <laughs> yeah, that was a little uh, dark for little, me. I mean, that was a little, <laughs> for a seven-year-old, that's yeah. a little dark. Right like, I, I've definitely said, oh, I don't, I can't do anything right. I'm no, or, I'm no good at what I do, or, you know, or something like that. Or yeah. even maybe a loser. But I, I don't think I've ever said I hate myself in yeah, that no. situation. No, yeah. It's, it, it, because it's it's in the midst of a classic, you know, seven to eight year old freak out, uh, you know, feeling bad. She knows she did something wrong. Um, you know, she goes, she hates herself, and then it's that is all tied into. She goes under the blanket and she goes, "I don't deserve fresh air to breathe." Again, a little, yeah, a little, a little like <laughs> now we're now we're getting into the Geneva Convention, yeah. you know, uh, torture stuff, and it's, it's you know, it gets a little dark there for a while. So. Uh... Of course, you know, Danny, you know, says, you know, what happened wasn't good or, you know, kind of schmoozes her a little bit and hugs her and tells her that things can be replaced, but you can't replace her. 
Yeah, it's a it's a classic, you know, you're getting in trouble, but I'll always love you. And it's a classic wind up to an episode of you do stuff wrong, you you tell the truth about it, you're gonna get punished, but I still love you. Right. In the end, there's nothing you know, in the end, we're always going to be there for you and, and things will, you know, eventually fix itself. So another great, that was a good, good episode. I thought it was, yeah, it, it had all the things of, of being in it. And this is the one, now the next one we get into is when the kids are a little older. So this was a, I don't know, I thought it was a good one. You picked a good one there to do. Uh, might as well get right into the second one. Uh, we're going to jump to season eight. Uh, episode 10 is aired on December 4th, 1994. So now girls are all about four years older. Um, I think uh, Kimmy and DJ are seniors. In yeah, they're school. in high school still. So they're, or they're in high school. Uh, Stephanie's obviously much older, and, and so is Michelle. And now we get introduced to the twins yep. uh, that uh, Uncle Jesse and Becky had. Um, the episode title, though, is unbelievable. Again, Under the Influence. I mean, we can all guess what's coming. Um, <laughs> um, so we'll jump right into it. Uh, episode starts, uh, Joey's making dinner. Um, he's not making meatloaf, though, Alex. You know what he's making? Meat muffins. Meat muffins. Uh, so that was <clears throat> another classic funny thing to start off the episode. This one gets a little, you know, this is a little more serious, what's going on it's, in this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is good. So, But it starts off, uh, you know... Uh, Pretty casual and a little laugh with the meat muffins. Uh, Michelle is older now, so she's kind of watching uh, her uh, cousins, right? Yeah. yeah. So they're twins, twin boys who are probably around what Michelle's age, probably a little younger than even what she was four years ago. Uh, but they're basically following her all around the house yeah. all day long. They've just been bugging her all day. Um, they just want to, you know, play with her and all this stuff, and she's having none of it. She doesn't want to deal with them anymore. Yeah. So. We've all been at that stage, you know. So, you know, granted, I was the oldest one; you were the youngest one in your fit. But we've seen it, you know, yeah. all around. <laughs> yep. Um. So yeah, but Stephanie arrives, and this is kind of where I started really laughing. She has a classic outfit on. Uh, she's got the the skirt <laughs> with a shirt that's hiked up, but doesn't show midriff. So it's really hiked up, but there's no. You know, there's no mid. We're not talking like schoolgirl Britney Spears outfit. It's it's hiked all the way up to her, ri- you know, ribs pretty hiked up. I thought that yeah. was interesting. Yeah, it it was. Um, I was gonna I was gonna describe it as to try to get paint a picture for our view, our listeners of uh, a Britney Spears esque outfit, but um, the skirt went up a little bit higher. But she her shirt was probably. I don't know, three threads big. It was yeah. like, it. Was, I mean, it's a classic, like, rebellious phase girl outfit in the 90s almost. Right. So I found that to be, yeah, it fit the time period, I guess. Yeah. So yeah. Um, after dinner, Kimmy joins the, the house. Um, we find out it's going to be Kimmy and DJ's first frat party they're attending. Yeah. I, I, Again, here they're they're pretty cool about it. now. I I I now nah, my parents were pretty cool about letting me go out at night. You know, going to people's houses if they'd have a hype. But I don't. I think if I would have said, "Hey, I'm gonna go head down to Wisconsin and go on a frat party or a, a house party on campus," right. my parents probably would have said, "I don't think that's a good idea." Yeah, especially in high school. There'd yeah, been, there in been high no school way. Too. We're there. We're in high school. We're talking. Yeah, there. There's no way. Um, so yeah, so Danny and, and Joey, this is where we find out that they were together in the frat in, in college, and uh, they're like, oh yeah, back at back in our day, uh, you know, frat parties were were a blast. Um, Joey's pickup line that he was he was the fourth man on the moon, and Danny's pickup line was he created the love boat, the show the <laughs> love boat, and then and then Danny's like, oh, I should go talk to DJ. Yeah, basically they were talking about how they lied to get in the, these yeah. chicks. You know, pants basically there being caught. Well, you know, so yeah, like I said, Danny, I did write that Danny really rushed upstairs to. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, one thing was I was really I made me else laugh too is uh Joey single Joey was off to a great Saturday night. Uh, he was playing Hungry Hungry Hippos with Michelle. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. So that, I mean, that's a little bit later on, but yeah, he's yeah. Uh, Kimmy comes in and he goes, oh, she's like, oh, this is what it looks like when you're pretty paraphrasing she's like oh this is what like losers do on a saturday night meanwhile like me and dj are going to our 
first college party with frat guys. Right. <laughs> uh, so, like you said, yeah. So, the, the, what's Danny's speech? Is, was it a not? What do you say? Just be careful. Up there yeah, pretty or, much. I mean, you know, it was, it was, it it was one of those big. things where like. I, I wasn't even paying attention to the words that he was saying because he comes in and he has no problem with these these high school age girls going to a frat party at a college, which to me is mind boggling um, that, you know, parents know. I mean, obviously, high schoolers go to these parties, but they do it under the guise of I'm going over to so and so's house to sleep over tonight. And then, and right. then they go out. Well, they, do they, right. they don't outright come out and say, hey, Dad, I'm, I'm in high school and I'm going <laughs> to this frat party. Right. There's 0.0% chance that anybody's doing it. And if they were, then I guess whatever. But the people that I know, there's 0.0 chance that they're doing it. They're making up a, a lie. They're saying, oh, we're going to this person's house or then we're going to this person's house. But really, then they're out at the parties. Exactly. You know, you know, you always say that you're going to go to a place that you know your parents know that you that you go there a lot and they trust their parents or trust the place you're going to be at. Then you, you, you meet right. there and then you go off. From yeah. There. But I mean, Danny's just like, yeah, I know you're going to this party. And, I'm cool. <laughs> and he, and he says, I, I don't have any problem with you going to this party, but you know, I, but he's like, just be safe. Cause this is, if somebody tells you yeah. they created the love boat, don't listen to him. <laughs> like that's, that's his only advice to him. I mean, un- unbelievable. Um, like I said, so that you're right afterwards. And, we, we see what Joey's exciting Saturday night gets to. Uh, of course, uh, the Twins ruin the game. Yep. And, uh, you know, they, they the the game board comes off the table and Michelle basically says something to the Twins, like, you're always annoying me or something yeah. along those lines. She, she gets mad because they knock, they come over and knock Hungry Hungry Hippos off the table. She's like, you've been doing this all day. It's so annoying. And then Nikki and Alex are like, oh, Michelle's mean. We hate Michelle. Yeah, we hate Michelle. And, and now Michelle thinks that the their cousins absolutely hate her. Right, because, um, you know, Jesse comes in too and, and he's like, oh, you know, they're just young. They'll forget about it in a second. And he opens up the door and they're sitting at the table <laughs> yeah. in the kitchen just yeah. chanting and banging on a table. We hate Michelle. We hate Michelle. So really, Michelle, like, she did what she wanted or she got what she wanted. I mean, yeah, let's be honest. That she's they're probably gonna leave her alone, or they're just gonna annoy her. Well, maybe they'll annoy her even more. Yeah, they hate her and they'll leave her alone. But yeah, I just thought, I found that really funny with Joey, like Mister Mister Single. Like you're in a you're in a pretty big city, like a really big city. Like I get you want to spend time with your niece and stuff. I get that, but yeah, he is a feathery mullet in this episode <laughs> yeah. too. It's feathery. Yeah, uh, he's. I think he's had the mullet through the. Every episode yeah. season. Oh, yeah. So I think that's his trademark. Thing. Uncle Jesse, in the beginning, used to have a really, he really nice bad mullet. mullet. I mean, it's I bad. Mean, it, was, it was so bad, it was, it was bad good. It was night, nice. right. Right. Um, now we get into the, the meat and the potatoes of the episode here. Um, we uh, Later the night, uh, we see uh, DJ is actually carrying uh, Kimmy up the stairs. And she's yelling, I can fly, I can fly. Uh, Kimmy is cooked out of her mind. Absolutely. Um, DJ, first of all, DJ, pretty impressive strength. She has, you know, Gibbler slung over her shoulder almost, not even a fireman's carry, but a little bit slung over her shoulder. She takes her up the whole staircase like that yeah. into her room. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. And, you know, granted, Kimmy's not the biggest thing in the world either. But, uh, yeah, DJ, DJ gets her up the stairs. Um, I can tell you, I been drunk a few times in my life but i've never felt i could fly i've never felt like that no <laughs> zero percent uh i felt like i've been in like a tornado because of the room spinning but yeah that's usually that, the next day yeah or when you're late yeah but uh apparently kimmy could fly so um stephanie of course barges in and sees what's going on and yeah and dj says well kimmy's drunk so it's well, like, at first, at, at, she goes, "Oh, he's not. She's not feeling very well." Oh, she did put you. Yeah. There. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She goes, "She's not feeling very well," and 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 Stephanie's like, "Oh yeah, wait a minute. I learned about this in oh, class." <laughs> and she's like, "Going. She's pretty much going through like a field sobriety test." And she goes, "Oh, she ate. Ta- she ate uh, tainted pork." Oh. That- <laughs> <laughs> what kind of health test is she taking? That right. this cook, this cooked out of their mind person is like, "Oh, it's tainted pork. She must be failing that class." And here's what I like. Granted, you know, Stephanie's pretty old, probably middle school or low, I mean, freshman, yeah. maybe in high school already. So she's probably up later. But 
They're, they must be home fairly early yeah. for this fight. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we find them a little bit later. We got kicked out. They but... got kicked out, but yeah. So um, so then right away, said, we got to tell Dan. We got to tell Dan what's yeah. going on. And, and and Danny does come in, right? Yeah, yeah. And he, he, he says, gee, you guys are home early. Like, he's, Yeah, he's... he comes in and, and it's... Um, uh, DJ tries to hide Kimmy under under the under, covers. Under the covers, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and DJ makes up a lie. He's like, "Oh, Kimmy got into a fight with her parents, so she's just like staying over here right. tonight." Good excuse, and very. And Kimmy is an annoying person too, so that that, that makes sense. Um, DJ here, uh, classic soccer sock look, right? Yeah, she pulled our schoolgirl outfit. She kind of pulls that going there. Yep. Yep. And I noticed that when I came Well, yeah, she's going to a frat party, so. Right. Um, then Kimmy gets out of bed, right? I'm reading. I, I, I must have. Okay, no, Kimmy does decide to leave. No, so so it's a little bit it's a little bit weird because the next two scenes are really in DJ's room. One's at night and one's the next morning, I think. So I think... I don't know if you're, you may be right that she tries to get up. As what I see is, is they get Danny and Stephanie out of the room. Yeah, exactly. When they buy it. And then like Kimmy's like stand like sitting up and like being obnoxious again. And to, and DJ basically just go to sleep or something. Yeah. And she goes, hey, you don't want me here. You're not my friend or something. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll just go, I'll just go home. And she walks, she starts walking and then passes all Yes, the exactly. That's how the scene ends. Passes. So that's, that's how, how the scene it, ends. You're right. Yep. So, you're right. You're right. So she, she was going to try to go home that night. Uh, the next scene we see, which and then cuts, is Michelle walks in the DJ's room. And Kimmy wakes up and looks like complete shit. <laughs> I mean, this is the classic. We've all been there. Yeah, it, it, Michelle comes in, she thinks DJ's the one under the covers and pulls him off and Gibbler must have reeked a booze because like Ste- or Michelle just like is like disgusted as soon as like she smells her. Uh, DJ then comes in and she's already up and about so obviously she didn't touch the sauce that night. Yeah, and she's wearing a dad robe which I found <laughs> real flattering. I mean, I, uh, you know what, I get she's at home but I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, we kind of figure out that Kimmy's trying to remember what happens, kind of, and DJ's yeah. kind of literally laying it on thick to her, basically saying, you know, you were. Well, we find out she, she was barfing all night in the toilet. Yeah, yeah so so she like, says, a, I don't know if you wrote. Oh, that, I, I, we wrote down a guarantee. We wrote down the same line. I'm, I'm going to have to start using this line. Go ahead, yeah. But a little bit before that, you know, um, when you said DJ comes in, DJ's like all up and, and chipper about everything. She opens up her blinds, and Gibbler's like, oh, turn down the sun. That's a very relatable statement of of having to turn down the sun. Yeah. But the but the state the the best line and the line that I'm for sure going to use now was she she had to when she was at the toilet she goes oh I had a dream last night that I was driving a white porcelain bus <laughs> and every time I hit the turn signal there's a flush noise and DJ's like yeah it's because you're puking all night yeah she was just blowing chow all night I thought yeah. that was hilarious um so Kimmy is. Then gets pissed at DJ because don't uh, basically because she said that DJ ruined her night. Right? Yeah. Gib was like, I was having, I was having the best night of my life, and you ruined it. She's like, I was the life of the life party. Life of the party, right? And then and and DJ was sitting. I thought this was another classic. I was sitting on reject roll. <laughs> yes. Now reject roll has been used in other episodes, including Saved by the Bell. I'm pretty sure that reject roll is. That we've heard that before in one of the Saved by the Bell episodes. Yeah, and and so it was a. You know they're they're going through it. Gibbler's like you ruined like this is what happened. It's like a classic flashback scene to the party that night before. Yeah, and the first line is she's like you were sitting on Reject Row, and she's pretty much sitting between like Screech and yeah, and the guy and the guys that were the nerds from Saved by the Bell are basically sitting on that couch, correct? Right. Yeah. Um. So DJ gets pissed and says, "Why don't you just leave?" Or makes her leave, I believe. Uh, at this point, I think Kimmy, if if you're familiar with Barstool or KFC Radio, uh, they call this Wonderland, uh, which is I don't know if you're familiar with Wonderland. Uh, for our listeners, it's basically when you wake up the next morning, you're still drunk, basically, or or you're you're or you're not as drunk as you were, but you still feel good and and you're you're you still don't think clearly on some things, and I think that's what Kimmy was. Uh, was in current in that state. Yeah, she was like, oh, and the one thing that stood out to me is she was like, oh, you know, I came in with these really, you know, hot guys or whatever, and she's like, I was the life of the party, and then I, de- I delivered a poem. 
who delivers a poem at at a frat party and thinks like it's the cool thing to do? Right. I I don't I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I it was very odd. I I think this is one of those things where this has been such a family episode. And they tried to throw him into this college party, and I just, I don't know. I, yeah. I guess I get it. It was on network TV or whatever. I get it, but I don't know. They, yeah. The life of the party was delivering, you know, a, a written, you know, like a slam poem in the middle of the party. Yeah. A frat party. Uh, that, I don't, that's a stretch. Right. <laughs> um, anything else from that scene? Yeah. I mean, it just ends, and, you know, the friendship's over. The friendship's and, done. Because yeah. Gibbler thinks that, you know, DJ ruined her life and DJ really knows what happens. It's like, I've never talked to you again. So, right. And we, we will eventually find out what really happened. But uh, the next scene cuts into the kitchen, I believe, right? Yeah. Uh, Joey's making another uh, unbelievable recipe, uh, flounder tarts. Yeah, it's pretty much just fish pop tarts. <laughs> now, this is another thing of the episode that gets a little strange. Um, so, obviously, we know what's going on between Michelle and the twins. Uh, you know, that the twins aren't, aren't liking, you know, Michelle because Michelle yelled at them basically. And so they're trying to teach forgiveness. Right. right. Is that what the big yeah, is? Yeah. That's the big thing is, uh, is, uh, uncle, uncle Jesse and Joey are trying to teach the twins how you're supposed to forgive each other. Cause the, um, you know, the twins are mad at Michelle and they're not going to forgive her for, you know, yelling at them when they not, when she got mad at the twins for knocking over hungry, hungry hippos. <laughs> So basically, this scene, of course, the flounder tart goo or what do you would say, it gets into play here. So one guy, you know, Jesse dumps some on or on his shirt on down Joey's shirt, and then Joey puts some on on Jesse's face. It gets yeah. way out of control. Yeah, it, it's, it's really just, pro- it's stupid. It, it's really progressive. So you know, Jesse Jesse comes in and she's talking with Michelle, and he's like, you know, the twins, whatever, and he eats a flounder tart, and he's like. Right. He has this disgusted look on his yeah. face. Goes over to Joey right away and spits it in his in his uh, <laughs> his oven mitt. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and 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 that and then he put and then he makes Joey put back on the glove. But then he's like, okay, you know, okay, twins, uh, we're gonna teach you about forgiveness. So like the first step of the progression is Jesse puts a flounder tart in Joey's pocket and then gives it a whack. Yeah, and of course it shoots up like a volcano. Right, right? exactly. So perfect. Yeah, so basically that goes back and forth, and what? Meanwhile, the kids are just looking at him like, "What are you guys doing?" Yeah, they're not getting it at all. You know, you're right. You know, Joey uh, puts fish goo in Jesse's face, smears it all around, and then Jesse comes back and he has a the pitcher of flounder goo, as he called it, and then he poured it down Joey's <laughs> shirt. Now, at one point, like. Uh, we'll get back to this, but at what point? This is still Danny's house. <laughs> at what point do the, does Danny say, "Stop making this 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 food. Just stop." Like yeah, it's like I get like it's not funny. There's nothing funny about meat muffins. There's nothing funny about flounder tarts. <laughs> I, I just, I, that's it's kind just, of you know the 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 B storyline of this episode is Joey's just an awful cook, and it's like these. I get right. Yeah, I think that's it's, what they're trying. It's like, I but, get it, but they're going a little over top. Have no, them, you're right. Have them burn the pizza. Have them yeah. like have, have them burn pizza. popcorn. Right. You know. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. So that kind of goes back and forth. And then who really does settle it? Doesn't Michelle? Find yeah, it Michelle comes in and pretty much gives Danny like a Danny speech from the first episode we talked about, and just goes, you know, forgiveness is no matter what you do, we'll always love each other. Right. And then Nikki and Alex are like, oh, I get it. Yeah, they get it immediately. So yeah, you got two, we forgive you. You got two, you know, middle aged boneheads trying to forgive us <laughs> of that. I found that uh, that was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, that was a little comedic. You know, yeah, the break right, up of the it, episode. It is a little, you know, it is, this 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 stuff. Like obviously, driving a car through a house is serious, but it was an accident. Nobody was hurt. Yeah, yeah. but this is, you know, this gets can get. I get it. Uh, so now we get into the the big the big parts here, which I, I I was totally amused by. I thought this was so great. I was laughing really hard at all this stuff. Um, Danny comes into DJ's room, and uh, DJ's just cleaning it up, like cleaning up shit, like cleaning up the sheets, like. Obviously, something happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. D- Danny comes in. It's kind of related back to the last scene. He goes, hey, we're all going out to breakfast because the kitchen smells like SeaWorld. <laughs> <laughs> um, DJ's super quiet, so obviously they know something's up. So he goes, you want to talk about it? And they're, you know, and so they he figures out they had a fight. Um, DJ admits that Kimmy was drunk. Yeah. And it... Uh, which... he, she she goes I, and Danny's like oh why didn't you tell me last night and she goes why well, you know I didn't want to get 
kid me in trouble and uh but she's like, I don't care about that anymore because I'm never talking to her again in my life. So. <laughs> and didn't Danny get real serious for a second? He's like, like something about ask her if she drank. And yep. no, I didn't drink. Like, yep. serious dad face got in there. So once Danny hears that she wasn't drinking, which obviously she was normal, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, or she wasn't hungover. So he, he kind of put two and two together. Uh, what we do find out, though, afterwards is that Kimmy doesn't even, didn't even make it home next door yet. Too long over to walk on. <laughs> She's laying out in a like a recline or what they like a those? beach chair, a beach much. chair like but like a beach a long where yep. you put your feet up. Yep. Where it basically breaks into three parts, so she hasn't even made it home. She is super hungover, and is laying out in the in Tanner's backyard. And that um, we finally get to see what really happened uh, at the party and how she was. Uh, a lot of things going on here. Um, we <laughs> we start off. Uh, I mean, that's the beer dispensing helmet she was wearing. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's a Happy Gilmore style beer dispensing helmet that she has on. I mean, this is automatically. Now, I, I, again, I mean, I get they're trying to, to, to you know, drinking's not good underage, you're not responsible. But that's, again, a little overboard. I don't know if you did. If you were drinking for the first time, I don't think I'd pull one of those on my head. A beer dispensing helmet never crossed my mind, probably, <laughs> ever. It, it doesn't even really cross my mind now <laughs> yeah, or, or even five years ago and I, would i do it ironically maybe yeah but it wouldn't it, Man, but it I, wouldn't be a thing where i was going to a party and i'd be like hey this is like a right. great gig like i'm bringing this beer dispensing helmet that i'm going to drink from all night right so basically we get to see that kimmy's just out of control at this thing and and uh she's throwing she ends up throwing a bunch of snacks in the air like pretzel yeah she's or... throwing stuff around well first of all who has like pretzels out at a a frat party, a college party in general, there's no way you have pretzels out. Right. They're trying to be way too classy. <laughs> well, so this must just be like a action. Like, now, you you know more about this than I, I don't. I don't ever really been to a frat house in per se at all. But, like, was this like a, a beginning of the year frat party, like where it was supposed to be casual, or all frat parties where you dress up a little bit? Um. Well, typically the, how it goes is like, they they do have theme parties a lot, and it's okay. typically on Thursdays because Thursdays are when, well, at least this is how it was where I, where I went to undergrad. Thursdays was the day they did it because that was the social days for fraternities and sororities. Okay, so they had you know a lot of those times those theme parties, and a lot of times on Saturdays those theme parties as well. Okay, um, and it's and the thing is it's never low key, like the. If it's a you know quote unquote true stereotypical frat party, um, painting with a broad brush here, it's never this low key where there's like <laughs> thirty people like right. in a, and just in a living room hanging out. It's in the downstairs basement. You know, lights are off, black lights are on. So it's closer to Animal House. Yes, the real yes, the Animal exactly. House. Okay, that's yes. what I was always curious of because there, there's been a lot of things in movies too where, it, like the beginning of Animal House, you see. The, the initiation or the welcoming you know party where it is looks more classy but. yeah okay so we got we get to that so she's throwing stuff in the air um <laughs> I, was there anything else that yeah she uh, well the the, th- the thing that kind of uh drives it over the edge is she knocks over a lamp and then she starts choking on the stuff she's trying the, to catch up in the air and you know dj pretty much has to do a heimlich on her and uh and the guy, a guy said, "Hey DJ, get this, get this girl out of here. Yeah, get get him out of here." And then, and then the head of the guy, kind of, or the the frat leader or yeah. whatever, says, "He does say we already kicked the guys out of the party with who brought the beer." Yep. Well, how often? <laughs> nobody else. Like there was no other beer in there, so Kimmy must have really got. She must have been the only one that was really drinking at the party. Now that's got to be the worst when you have one person that got that messed up at the party. She must have had quite the time. Yeah, and Gibbler tries to pull a Jason kid and drive home. Yeah, she says... She's not letting DJ drive home. She said it was all BS and that that that, that uh, she took the keys from her or something like yeah. something on that. So, But DJ was smart. Uh, we, we find out it gets a little sad here. We find out that that how DJ's mom passed away was from a drunk driving accident. Yep. So then that kind of hits home with Kimmy. Uh, you know, she sobers up real quick. Once you, once yeah, you, yeah, that's that. a fair statement. Um, uh, so Kimmy does admit that she was an idiot. Um, the alcohol worked with talking to guys, she cl- claims, which mm-hmm. 
I, I, I think that would I agree with that. I mean, it's liquid courage. I think I think we everybody loosens up with that. Uh, was there anything else here? Yeah, yeah I, it just you know, Gibbler. So they come back from a flashback scene uh, from you know what really happened, like we we're talking about. And uh, Kimmy's like, "Oh, you're still just jealous of me, DJ." And DJ's like, "You know, no." And then she goes in the whole spiel. Is like, I, my, "I lost my mom to a drunk driver. I wasn't gonna lose my friend, my best friend, the same way." And like you said, just instantly. Yep. Kimmy's like, "Oh my god, like I feel so bad. I just didn't know how to act around like college guys, and you know, drinking, you know, loosened me up and and made me feel cool." <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't got really anything else. There was, I guess, the episode, or the, I don't know who. I think DJ must have said this. Uh, everybody is, everyone is nervous at times, but it's a lot easier if you stay in control. Yes, I think that's kind of the, the overall message. It didn't include drinking, but it, it did mean drinking. So, uh, that's that's what I got out of that. I, it was an unbelievable episode. Great I, episode. Great flashback scenes. Yeah. Uh, anything else from it? Nope. That's pretty much it. All right, so for next week, it is 4th of July week. So I thought uh, for 4th of July, and, and Alex, I don't know if you want to do this or not, I think we go back to Saved by the Bell, but I think we go, since it's the middle of summer, I think we go to two Malibu Sands. Oh, episodes. have to. And have to do the 4th of July episode we'll do for one Malibu of those, We'll do the one there, and then we'll, we'll, you can, we'll decide another one if you want to pick another, because there is some good... Stacy uh, Carosi, baby. Stacy Carosi, and we got... Uh, Stacy's boyfriend that comes back, that Craig Strand. Uh, <laughs> Craig, uh, my buddy will will enjoy that one. Craig Strand. Uh, so we'll definitely do those two next week because I think that's like a perfect midsummer uh, thing when they go when all the kids go work for the ritzy beach club that, uh, of course, it's only Lisa's parents are at. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, but otherwise, uh, this weekend, that's that's about it. World Cup, we you been watching the World Cup at all or not? A little bit. Um, I'm a big Ronaldo fan. Um, and uh, the whole Mexico thing of uh, them advancing on a loss was, was great. I paid attention to that. Um, but, I mean, I'll probably uh, watch more closely the knockout rounds now. Yeah, all these uh, matchups are pretty good. It looks like Saturdays are going to be crazy. It's yeah. France, Argentina, and then uh, Portugal, Uruguay. So there'll be two great games to start it off. Exactly. Yeah, I've been kind of in your boat too, just been watching scores, kind of doing the recaps at night, but now I'll be kind of more into it. I've been I've been more closely, I, you're going to have an a episode on this, but I've been more closely following uh, the drama that is the, the NBA um, no, since, yeah, I wanted to ask since you the draft that. and as well as, you know, after the draft, everything that's kind of coming out and Magic Johnson saying that if he doesn't get any uh, free agents in the next two years, he's resigning. Which I thought that's a pretty baller move of him to say. I mean, that unless he means he's pretty confident what's going to happen. Yeah, unless he, unless he knows. Well, we know Magic Johnson has a history of tampering, so he may very well know who's, <laughs> who's coming yeah, already. Right. So he can say that um, with some confidence. Yeah, um, I guess too. I wanted to ask you, what did you think about the NBA draft? Uh, maybe give us. Well, first you can give us your thing on the box pick, and maybe give us guys that you liked in the draft and where they went, and maybe guys that you thought were was a bad pick or a bust pick. I don't, whatever you want to say, say it. Yeah, I, I uh, with the box pick. Obviously, I'm a big box fan. I uh, I love the pick. Um, I do too. I know people are split over it, but the thing is. Um, you know, DiVincenzo, they're like, oh, he was, you know, whatever, the fifth leading scorer or whatever he was on, on Villanova. But the thing is, he was the best player in the title game. Yep. Um, he was, he he's athletic. He can shoot. I think his, I think his field goal, his three-point field goal percentage is like 41%. Um, obviously from the college line, but still the potential's there to actually have a shooter and a, and a guy that can defend and the guy that's athletic enough to get up and down the court with Giannis as well, um, I think that just from a, a you know fit standpoint of what the Bucks needed, obviously a big guy's needed as well. But we haven't had any outside shooting. You know, Rashad Vaughn was supposed to be that. He stunk. Yeah, he's horrible. Um, so it's one of those things where I I love the pick. Um, there's one thing that um, I texted you kind of the day after when it came out that the. The Hawks were going to trade up to take um, uh, what was it, Kevin 
a uh, huter or yeah, well, harder or however you say it. Yeah, how do you one. pronounce it? It's like Hunter with an extra E before yeah. the end. Um, and they're going to trade up to get him at 17. So the Bucks theoretically could have got 19 and 34, which would have been great. Whether they got DiVincenzo at 19 would have been a different story. But it came out that they couldn't make the trade anymore because they leaked the pick. Right. They leaked the pick to, you know, Woj. And then Woj tweeted it out and Atlanta just goes, oh, we don't have to make the trade anymore because right. you're not taking them. Yeah. That was, that was classic Bucks being Bucks. Yeah. You know, you can't, you know that a trade's on the table and you can't keep your mouth shut. Right. Um, but I didn't have any problems with the pick. Probably just the process that went into, you know, leaking the pick and not getting an extra draft pick this year that we didn't have. Um, but, you know, as as far as the rest of the draft, I thought um, Luca going third is, you know, I, th- I think Dallas made a great move to get him. I agree. Yeah. Um, we talk about that. By the way, we're recording. This is our second pot of the day, so we, we have another one. I, I originally was going to have these takes with, with Noah. Yeah. But, well, we, um, schedules didn't cooperate, but we... We, I basically I, said that that was the heist, I think. Oh, yeah. I, I, I totally agree. I think as well as um, I think Philadelphia, if they're making the play for Kawhi, getting that 2021 pick yep. um, was for, for you know, just giving the Suns Macau Bridges um, and to get a, 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 you know, Zaire, they got Zaire Smith back yep. and Zaire. a pick that was... And I, 2021 is going to be like the – it's like a, the pinnacle draft pretty yeah. much they're saying. Cause it's that, a high school kid. Yeah, and they might have a double draft that yeah. year. Yeah. So, like, these – like, 2021, 2022, 2023 are, like, the coveted draft picks. Yeah. So, if they were going to make a move for Kawhi to get that extra piece um, was huge for them. Yeah. Um, I think the rest of the draft kind of – there's – you know, there's no really surprises except uh, Robert Smith – or Robert Williams – yeah, dropping the to, dropping to Boston at twenty seven or twenty eight yeah. or whatever it was, and Porter dropping. Well, P- Porter, but but you know. there was at least baggage on that. You know, yeah, like, so that was always a thing of. It was one of those things where like, oh, everybody the the Kings love him at two, yeah, and then but but then you know it finally comes out of what his medicals really shown, and he's pretty much already has like a Tiger Woods back at the age of nineteen. Yeah, and he's yeah, and he's basically gonna redshirt this year. So we'll yeah. we'll see what happens. But yeah, I wanted to get your take on that. Yeah, finally, I think before I, we end here, I wanted to ask you. So the four or the three big guys we we talk about on the other podcast uh, that we'll release after this one. Uh, so we'll get your take on this. Is this is kind of what I asked Nowak. Uh, where do you uh, where do you see Kawhi ending up? If you had to say, I, we basically what I did is I kind of gave a percentage of two teams, like seventy percent one team, maybe thirty percent one team. Um, that's um, kind of where I. That's kind of what we did for the three big guys. Just to, we didn't give a definitive answer, but where we think they're leaning. Yeah, that's a good question. I think. Um, I think it's sixty percent Lakers, forty percent um, Philadelphia. Okay, and then uh, the and I, I won't say with mine just because we'll we'll do it on the other one. Um, we had the other one was uh, Paul George. Uh, um, he did opt out of his thing. Yeah, he's yeah he's officially a free uh, officially a free agent, I guess now. Uh, I would say I don't I what was it two days ago? He gave this like impassioned speech about how much he loved Oklahoma City. Yep. Um, and opting out doesn't necessarily mean that he's not. Back. Yeah, exactly. I would eighty twenty stays in Oklahoma City. Okay, and then of course the last one. Uh, Obviously, I, I'm basing that on. Um, it depends what LeBron does. Yeah, it, it, everything depends on LeBron. Once and, that and, chip and, falls, and everything else is going to be. And everything depends on what the Lakers want to do with Kawhi, because from my understanding, is they're getting like ready to do like a Godfather offer, is what they called it, which is what it sounds like is like Ingram. Well, what I heard this morning right now was just Ingram and a first rounder, but they're gonna have to add more. To, to they're gonna have to do Ing- they're gonna have to do like Ingram Kuzma in the first rounder yeah, at least. At least, and I I know Ball they don't want Lonzo, they want nothing to do with him, so it's gonna have to be it, yeah. Right? I think Kuzma and uh, yeah, I just I just heard I just heard um, uh, a Godfather offer. So I mean, I guess it all it's what it all shakes out with Kawhi as well. If Kawhi doesn't go. Um, to the Lakers, LeBron goes to the Lakers. Then, I mean, Paul, LeBron's not going to the Lakers unless somebody's going with him, and he already knows. Right. Yeah. So those are your three. So we'll see how they match up. 
Um, we got that podcast is dropping on Sunday uh, with Nowak, but now we got a we got a kind of a forty eight hour stretch here. It's going to be pretty wild, I think, with that. So, uh, yeah, we'll join us next week. We will have. Uh, I don't know when you want to do the pod. You want to do it Wednesday night, or do you want to do it on Thursday, or what? Yeah, we can. I mean, we might as well do it. Maybe yeah, we get somebody roped into doing it on Wednesday when, if we're just like hanging out. Yeah, maybe we'll try to do that. So maybe we'll get a, a special guest on. So otherwise, uh, we'll see you next week.